This is the Toyota Highlander Hybrid in bronze edition. This is a 2022 model, and Toyota says that this is supposed to get 35 miles per gallon on the freeway and 35 miles per gallon in the city, which is a pretty good number, but I'm not sure it's really gonna do that. So what I think we should do, let's go on a quick little road trip and find out if it really does get the mileage that Toyota says it does. So let's find out what the real world range of this vehicle is. Here's my methodology. We're gonna do mostly freeway. We're definitely gonna do some city also. I'm gonna drive like a normal person, which means maybe with the flow of traffic, maybe 10 miles an hour over, not excessive speeding, definitely not going excessively slowly. I'm gonna put it in eco mode. And as we're driving, I'm gonna give you my impressions of the vehicle too. So let's get in the road. I'm about halfway through the drive now. And it's been a mix of no traffic and I've been able to go over the speed limit about 10 miles an hour. And now I'm sitting in traffic. And so the indicator on the dashboard is telling me I'm getting 39.7 MPG average. So I don't know if that's accurate because I find that every car that I've ever been in really is quite optimistic. So we'll see if we're actually hitting that 35 MPG average pretty soon, say I'm about halfway through the trip. So if you've driven Toyota products before, this is going to be no surprise to you at all. The ride quality is typical Toyota, which means it's very, very good. It's a little bit soft, but it's not a problem in a vehicle like this. I think it's uh, pretty appropriate. There's a little bit of road noise coming in here, perhaps a little bit more than I would like. It's definitely not a premium vehicle like a Lexus. I'm getting some noise coming in from the tires. Uh, the steering is, again, typical Toyota, which means pretty light, a little over boosted for my particular taste. The height of this thing is really good. It's really easy to see. The sight lines are excellent all the way around. And the seats are actually quite comfortable. The passenger seat is eight-way adjustable and the driver's is 10-way adjustable. And you got a lot of little toys in here. You've got this nice little moonroof that opens up. The display is pretty easy to read on here. It's quite configurable. You can see what your MPG is. And currently it says I'm getting 37.5. It was better when I was sitting in traffic. Now it's slightly worse. The information display, this little eight inch guy in front of me, it's okay. It's sort of getting a little bit older right now. You've got wired Apple CarPlay, which works just fine. There actually is no navigation in here. So you need to really hook up your phone if you wanna get navigation, but I don't see that as any kind of problem. Heating and ventilation is very good, very easy to use. I like the physical controls. On the steering wheel, you've got a plethora of buttons. It will take a minute to get used to all the different buttons that you have on the steering wheel for all the different functions and there's a ton of space in here. It's a pretty good place to do a road trip and the gas mileage does seem to be fairly impressive considering the size of this vehicle. There are very few vehicles that are this size, three row SUVs that are a hybrid and Toyota has done hybrids really well for a long time. So I'm expecting that it's going to return the gas mileage that they're promising. I think it's going to be pretty close. At least that's what's indicated. Toyota is really known for hybrids. They've been doing it since forever, since the original Prius. But in this relatively large SUV size, this is considered midsize, sort of almost full. There's really not a lot of competition in the space with hybrid SUVs. So we have the Kia Sorento, which is a little bit smaller. And then we have the Ford Escape Hybrid. So this is sort of in a class, not quite by itself, but I'd say a class of two. I'd really say the Ford and this are sort of competing in terms of size. The Bronze Edition is right in the middle of Toyota's lineup. At the base, you've got the LE, then you've got the XLE, and then you've got this Bronze Edition. So this has everything that XLE does, but you get this appearance package, which has these bronze wheels, which, you know what? I kind of dig them, they're 18 inch wheels. And let's just talk about for a second what this vehicle has got in terms of the powertrain. So this is a hybrid. So underneath the hood, we have a two and a half liter engine. And we also have two electric motors. This is the all wheel drive version. And so we've got an electric motor up front. We also got one way in the back too. And what's interesting about this all wheel drive system is that the front and the back are actually not physically connected. There's no drive shaft. So the rear wheels are driven by the electric motors only. 
and that's pretty cool. And this whole thing is connected by an ECBT, electronic continuously variable transmission. So you do get a little bit of that rubber bandy effect. So the interior is a pretty nice space, as you can imagine for Toyota. We're not up to Lexus caliber, but being the bronze edition, we've got some pretty interesting accents and stitching here. So we do have some bronze stitching all the way along the dash. And in the seats, we have this pattern, which is cloth. And we have this material, which is not leather. It's sort of fake leather. I think they call it soft tex. And we have some bronze accent stitching too. This kind of looks a little bit like something my grandma would absolutely love in terms of the pattern. But I'll leave that up to you to decide if there's something that you like. I think it's very Japanese looking and maybe you think that's cool. Not really my thing, but it is fairly clean and simple and kind of elegant looking. So there's actually a fair bit of usable space in here as you might imagine with an SUV of this size. So you've got a little shelf underneath the infotainment and heating and ventilation here where you can put your phone. There is, it looks like a USB port. No, nope, it's for change, believe it or not. So if you uh, use parking meters that still need change, you can put it right there. There's also a spot for your phone right over here. You've got two drink holders right in the middle for your water. Since this whole thing is pretty tall, it doesn't really get in the way. And then in the center console, you've got a couple of tricks. So this kind of slides back like this. And then you've got a wireless charging pad right over here. You can flip that open. And then you've got another tray where you can put more stuff in there. And then you could put a whole purse down in here. It's actually a pretty big spot. It's not the widest in the world. It's not the easiest to get to. Also, in the doors, there's plenty of space for full-size water containers. So this has a built-in screen, a monitor, in place of the rear view mirror. So I just went behind the car so you can sort of have a better view of what's going on, especially at night. But if you don't like that, you can just flip it down and you get a normal rear view mirror. So kind of a cool thing. I'm not the biggest fan of it personally because I find it a little bit odd to look at. Uh, so I just prefer the regular mirror, but hey, it's there. If you like cool tech, there you go. So this is a three row SUV. The second row has got a lot of space. And one of the things I like is you can move this seat front and back. You can make it really, really tight. And it also tilts and reclines with this button right here, this thing right here. And you've got a center armrest and you've got a couple of drink holders here. And in the back, you've got your own climate control and you've got 120 volt AC outlet, 1500 watts. So you could plug in like your big 80s boom box here and have your own party back here. And there's a super cool thing. It's got a shade, oops. So I can roll this up. And when I don't wanna see the sun or my photographer right over there, I can do that. Now the third row is the row for the people that you don't really like that much or small children. So I'm gonna get into the third row and I'm gonna show you what it's really like. It's kind of a, it's kind of a penalty box back here, but if you are under four foot tall or you're like me and you like to have your knees up in your chest, it's pretty good. So in this seven passenger SUV, which is what Toyota says it is, which it's really, 4.5, I think, or maybe five. When you've got the rear seats up, this is how much space you've got in the cargo area, the hatch. So it's not huge, but these do fold down and everything falls down flat, which I kind of like. Now I wish it had power back here. So to get these headrests to fold down, you sort of got to flip this thing up and wait right to the last second for the headrest to fold down, but it does. There it goes. So it's pretty flat. And also these center ones fold down flat too. It took me a second to figure it out. So you pull this. Flip this and this middle lever, and there you go. It's actually a lot of space in here. This is super, super practical. In terms of price, I think this is fairly competitive with the rest of the market. The Highlander starts at about $40,000, and this bronze edition, this hybrid, is about $47,000, including destination. So 3.774, in the last video that I did it with the Ford Maverick, people were a little upset that I decided to top it up and give an extra click. So I'm not gonna give an extra click and it's gonna leave it where it is. Let's find out what the actual fuel economy was and let's see if Toyota's really telling the truth with their 
estimation. So the vehicle is telling me I got 38.2 MPG over 104 miles. Hmm. And now let's see what the actual calculated gas mileage was. Drum roll, please. Remember Toyota says this is gonna get 35 MPG mixed use, which is exactly what they did. 104 miles is what I traveled. It was a mix of highway and also city streets. And I got 27.6 miles per gallon, which is actually a lot less than I expected. So let's figure out, there's two possible things that could account for this. One is that I didn't really fill it up completely before I started my journey, but to all the people that were telling me not to top it up before I started the journey, I actually did top it up. I made sure that the tank was full. I filled it up twice, two clicks. It seemed to be completely full. It couldn't take any more. And then when I got to the pump at the end of my journey, I actually didn't top it up. No clicks there. So actually that should use less fuel, but in fact, it was way, way off. Either the fuel pump was not working properly or this is just reporting incorrectly. And I don't think that's all that unlikely to be honest with you. In my experience on every single car that I have ever owned, the MPG that is displayed on the dashboard is always optimistic, sometimes wildly optimistic. And perhaps that is just the case here because I used 3.7 four gallons to go 104 miles, that's really not that good. And it cost me $20.54. So discuss in the comments. After I returned the Highlander to Toyota, I went online and I checked Fuelly, which is a website where people can figure out what their real world efficiency is. And most people seem to be getting about 31 to 33 MPG real world. So my experience of getting 27, I'm just gonna toss it up to the fact that probably I just didn't drive far enough and things just didn't average out. I normally would do a 300 mile drive, but I just didn't have time for this review. If you're in the market for a mid-size SUV that's larger, that has three rows, I think the Highlander Hybrid is frankly a pretty good choice. I've driven a lot of vehicles and it drives very much like a Toyota, which means it's smooth, it's relatively quiet, the interior space is simple, it's clean, and the controls are easy to use, and it's not at an insane price. So if you can get one from a dealer without a lot of markup, I think this is probably gonna be a pretty good choice for a long-term vehicle. You're probably gonna get that famous Toyota reliability. And if you wanna see another video on a hybrid or electric vehicle, click right over here. My name is Eric, thanks for watching.